Hello, it's Jay here again and welcome to another tutorial. So, in this lesson, we're going to fill out the come down state and we're also going to get a few other things in place just in preparation for further functions. So, with that said, let's come to the player jump function first. And we're going to copy these two lines that manage the player one move direction. So let's copy those. And we'll paste those in. I'll just enter. And we'll also copy the collision flags line. So we don't actually need to change much. We need to change this variable to player speed on the y axis and we actually don't need to normalize the direction. Now we are getting to the point where we can test our script so if you want to see the effects of normalized within come down maybe try that and then delete it and see the difference and you can understand why I would remove that line. So let's come to the very bottom of the function here and we're just going to say if open and close brackets inside the brackets and it's not the underscore sorry player is grounded will open and close brackets into the comments if player is grounded let's copy one of the lines where we switch states we'll paste that in we'll get rid of the empty line and obviously if the player has hit the ground we want to return so we're going to change the player one idle state so let's just paste that in the comments as well so we'll just save that off there so that is the come down section done so with that said we've still got a lot of things we need to get in place so let's come to the top and we're going to create another public float here i'm going to put it with where i define the rest of the player variables underscore player jump horizontal and i'll make this equal to 5f also so we'll say it defines players jump horizontal value and let's come below here and we'll create another animation clip and this time we want to open and close the square type of brackets because we're going to create an array and we'll say underscore player attack anim and we'll close the line off now i'm going to stress this at this point because i know a lot of times when people use an array for an attack for a range of attack animations they think that the animation's going to be random. It certainly is not going to be. We're going to have specific buttons for specific attacks. So a button for punch, a button for high kick, low kick. You get the idea like any other fighting game. What we're going to do in this case with the array of animation clips for the attack is depending on the button press we're going to say call this number this value within that array and obviously that value will correspond to whatever button you are pressing so please um, take this on board at the moment that 
the attack will be player defined. Absolutely. There will be no randomness to the attack. So, it's something I've not done on this channel before, is to do attack animations in this fashion. But that's one of the reasons I'm going to do it in this script. One, because it works rather well and two to show you something different something that um, probably many of you haven't seen before um so with that said let's get into the comments so we'll say creates slot in inspector to assign an array of the player's attack animations and we'll just create the line break there so let's have a look at other things we need to get in place I'm going to come I'm going to come to the enum and I think I'll put these here and we'll create naming conventions so we have player jump so let's just say player jump Forward. Let's keep it simple, the naming conventions, and player jump backwards. And I'll add commas to them. So, come down. Let's add a comma there. And we'll create two new states. Come down, forwards. Comma, come down backwards. And remember, no comma on the last one. So you can guess which states are coming next, but um, let's get some more things in place to begin with. Let's have a look at the void start. I think I'll put mine here. It doesn't really matter where, but I'm going to put mine here. For open and close brackets, int. And we'll use A for an animation, actually. And we'll say it's equal to zero. Let's close that off. We'll say A is less than player attack anim and we'll say dot length again we'll close off we'll say a plus plus to increase that length so let's put this into the comments let's say creates an int for animations And in fact, I'm going to put here. So let's put number. Um, in fact, I'm going to say numeric value. For animations. And gets the length based on array size. We'll come to the line below. So we'll say player. And we actually want the animation component, which is player one anim. Yep. This here. So let's come back. And what we want is to open and close the square type of brackets. Inside the brackets, we want player attack anim. We'll want the square brackets again, open and close. Inside, we'll put the letter A. We'll say dot name. And then we'll come to the outside of the brackets. We'll say wrap mode equals, and we want wrap mode dot once. 
let's close that off there and yeah i think we'll break this up for commenting keep the comments neat so we'll say set attack animations to equal wrap once so let's save that off there so yeah basically we're just setting the animations for a one-time play we make, we're trying to set the animations not to loop although they'll still get they'll still loop in a sense because they'll still get be called if we don't change states but of course we're doing that so the issue is negated but um i don't know if i've explained that quite as well as i probably could have but uh, i advise you to uh, read up on the rap modes obviously on the unity website but basically that's what we're doing we're setting the animations not to loop so let's have a look at what else we can get in place in this lesson so we'll come here and in fact let's create the cases so we'll need to pop copy this in twice and i'm going to try and keep them in the same order as i've got them here so jump and let's copy that twice as well and we'll just switch out the naming conventions as normal so let's paste that in there we'll paste it in here obviously we're going to get a red error because we haven't created the function down here as of yet but of course we're going to be doing that so that's not a problem for the jump backwards and the come down as well let's copy and paste those naming conventions in and finally for the jump backwards so that's them created now and yeah in fact let's just go and create the functions at this moment so let's paste that in close the line off or sorry close the function off let's paste that in again come down forwards again we'll copy and paste it into the debug log backwards we'll copy and paste that as well let's copy both of those and we'll come to the jump let's paste those in and of course i'm just going to check and obviously i'll grab these at the same time so let's paste jump forwards in and yeah we'll just copy and paste jump backwards in so let's paste those in oh. so we'll paste that in there and there as well let's check yep all the red errors have gone and we'll save that off there and i think we'll leave it here for this lesson because obviously we've got the last of the original states we've created finished and we've also set our script up ready to actually create four new states or we've created four new states to just need filling out and we'll continue this in the next lesson so as always i hope you enjoyed this lesson i hope to see you next time and until then as always bye for now